if we stick on uh, Hitler for just a minute, uh, what lessons do you take from that time? Do you think it's a unique moment in human history, that World War II? I mean, both Stalin and Hitler, you know, is, is it something that's just uh, an outlier in all of human history in terms of the atrocities, or is there uh, lessons to be learned? You mentioned, we mentioned uh, offline that you're not just a student of the entirety of the history, but you also are fascinated by just different like policies and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like what's the immigration policy? What's the yeah. policy on science? And well, uh, look, Third Reich in Power, let me plug it, by Richard uh, Richard Evans, I think is what it was. Because that actually will tell you, like what was it like to live under the Nazi regime without the war? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a hard question in terms of the lessons that we can learn. Because there's a lot, and it's actually been over- it's been over indexed almost. I mean, yeah. Everything comes back to Hitler in yeah. a conversation. So I kind of think of it within Mao, Stalin, and Hitler as I don't want to say payments for, but like the end point payment for the sins and the problems of the monarchical system that evolved within Europe, basically like 1400 mm -hmm. and more. I basically think that. 1400, the wars between the state, you know, wars between France, England, the balance of power, eventually World War I, and then serfdom within Russia, the Russian Revolution that birthed Stalin, same thing, the Kaiser and Imperial Germany in this like incredibly crazy system of balance of power in World War I, and then same thing within China in terms of the warring states and then the disintegration, the European, you know, how this is how they think of it, you know, which is like the century of humiliation and they had to have something like this. I think of it, I try to think of it within the context of that. I don't want to think of, I don't want to sound like an inevitabilist, but I think of it as, I like to think about systems, especially here in DC, that's why I got into politics, which is that you have to understand systems of power and the incentives within systems and the disincentives and the downside risk of what you're perp of what you're creating because it that is what leads and creates the behavior within that system i was just talking to my girlfriend about this yesterday it's kind of funny like I read these, I'm obsessed with these books um, by Robert Caro, the biographies of Lyndon Johnson. He's written like 5,000 pages so far and it's yeah. still not done. Yeah. Okay, so like <laughs> these are these are like books I base my life on. And look, these are Washington and the story of the post New Deal era and forward. Not much has changed. Like the Senate is the, still the Senate. So many of the same problems with the Senate are still there. Um, in some cases, no, not not anymore. But if for a while, some of the people who were there with Johnson are actually <laughs> still. Um, one of them is the president of the United States. Just a joke. And you think about also same with the media relationship, right? Like there's this media. Really, they may have come and gone. Like the the people who were in the media and who were cozy with the administration officials. I mean, they just recreated themselves. It's like this. It's like an ecosystem which doesn't change. And the, the that's why I'm like, oh, it's not that was a specific time. That's just DC. Like that is DC because of the way the system is architected. It's pretty much been that way since like 1908, whenever like, you know, Teddy Roosevelt was dining with these journalists and he would yell at them. And then he would go over to the society house. And like, in many ways, that's now instead of going to Henry Adams's house, like the people are co congregating in Calorama um, which is the richest neighborhood here at somebody else's house. Like it's the same thing. So you have to think about the system and then the incentives within that system about what the outcomes that they're producing. If you actually want to think about how can I change this from the outside? That's also why it's very difficult to change because the system is designed in order to produce actually pretty specific outcomes that can only be changed in extraordinary times. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's hard to to predict what kind of outcomes will result from the incentive, uh, the system that you create, right? Right. In the case, because especially when it's novel kind of situations, what Trump actually created a pretty novel situation. And a lot of the uh, things that we've seen in the 20th century were very novel systems where people were very optimistic about the the, <laughs> the outcomes, right? And then it turned out to not have the results that uh, they predicted. I. In terms of like things being unchanged for the past hundred years and so on, 